Here's a first look impression of DV5 public alpha by a non-DV user. Hi, my name is David from Dave Den Web Dev, and on this channel, I like to talk about all things WordPress, especially about accessibility and dynamic data using page builders like Elementor and Bricks or Gutenberg. But in today's video, we'll be focusing on DV and what I think about the new public alpha that they just released and what they can probably improve in the future. So let's jump right in. Before we continue, I want to say a big thank you to two of my friends who made this possible. I'll leave a link to where you can find them in the description if they so allow. But now let's jump right in. So for today's video, we're working with DV version 5.0.0 public alpha and this is an alpha release so they are bound to be bugs so i'll go ahead and point out some of the bugs and just some of the general workflow that is with dv as you can see dv is a theme not a plugin so that's why we install it from appearance and then themes we don't install it from your plugins area for other extra bits i went ahead to install two plugins the core framework and SVG support. So like I already said from the beginning, a little disclaimer, I've never used DV before, so I may be making some mistakes. If you see something I'm doing wrong, please do let me know in the comments so that I know how to improve or what I'm missing from DV. But yeah, basically this is what I created. I just created a simple page based on Imran from Web Squadron's template. So it doesn't look exactly like a template, but I just wanted something to work with. And I'll show you some of the bugs already. But yeah, let's continue. The first thing you need to be aware of is that like so many other page builders and themes, DV also follows the method of using magic areas. So what do I mean by that? They have an options page, which now links you to different portions where you can set different things. So if you want to set things like your styling, so your colors, your typography, and things like that on a global scale, you come under DV and then theme customizer then you can see the different parts so there's general settings which is for your typography your layout options and your site identity so you can add in your favicon and or change the title and other things you can add the layout the one thing i don't like here is that it has to be in pixels so you are stuck with pixels you can't do any other thing you can't add css variables anywhere in the builder that is the big no-no that i have with the builder that nowhere in the options have i found the ability to add css variables some places they allow you to add like rams percentages and things like that but nowhere allows you to add css variables and the way i like to work is i've already created the core framework and I've created a bunch of CSS variables and utility classes in this framework. So I just want to be able to apply the variable and it applies in the global scale. But unfortunately with DV, I would expect that with the release of version five in this era, in this decade, you should be following the latest trends, which is using CSS variables, the CSS framework and things like that. But unfortunately they are still stuck in the old ways of having to use pixels. So yeah, we can only set it in pixels. Then you can set your primary color, your secondary color. If I go back, you can set your typography. Like I said, still stuck with pixels. So here I can't even use a rem, which is an accessibility problem here that I'm stuck with having to use pixels. So I have to say 16 pixels, 32 pixels. So if a user wants to increase the size from their settings in their browser so if you go under your settings and the user comes under accessibility no sorry appearance and tries to increase the font size as you can see here font size i put it at medium if you want to go large or larger none of these options will work because you are using the pixels rather than realms if you're using realms then this will now change the default realm from 16 pixel which is the default to whatever this large and extra large main for the browser. So that's why you should always use REM, but unfortunately with them, you can't add REMs here. Everything is pixel within this customizer area. 
So, but you can add different kind of colors and everything you want. So let me go back. Then you can add background color as well. Okay. So the other thing, you can set your header and navigation if you want to do it from here, or you can go to the next portion, which I will show you to be able to create your header. But let's just go back. The other thing is to set your buttons. You can set the global style for your buttons. So I've set the color to be purple and then the text color to be white. One thing I didn't realize in the first instance is that when I come to the colors and I choose a color here, it was still showing me transparent. I didn't realize that the transparency bar was set to zero. So no matter what color I chose, it didn't reflect anything. Until later, I was able to realize that I have to actually set the transparency to go back to one. So if in case you don't know about it, that is somewhere you should look at. Let's publish this. Go back. You can also set the hover style for your buttons. The way I generally I like to work is that I like to first create a bunch of variables and utility classes with my framework. Then I like to now go on a global scale and set some defaults. So like your H1 to H6, I want to be able to set the typography using either clamp or like rems. Then things like your site wide width and other things like that. Then once you have done that on a global scale, you only now go to each widget and then you modify them on a widget basis. I like that they have the global area, but unfortunately they don't have it in the way I like to work because they're not allowing CSS variables and they're just focusing on pixels. So that is the one thing that DV needs to come and check out here. But you can set up every other thing, your blog and other, your homepage settings, things that you normally see in the classic customizer of any theme. So let's go back. So that's it for the options. Now, if you want to actually create your header, your main and your footer, you come to the theme builder. So that's where we'll go to next. So you can now set up your global header, your global body and your global footer. And this is where I'll show you the second bug. So let me go ahead and create the header to so build global header. Then I'll go ahead and say, okay, I want a two column layout. So let's see, maybe this layout, the first layout, I want to add a logo, which is my image. So add an image and let me go ahead and try to add an image. Unfortunately, I've been clicking, but within the theme builder, you can't actually add an image. You can only add dynamic tags. So I think if you go to, well, let me delete this first, then I can use a dynamic tag and choose maybe site logo, then that is what will work. But you can just, or let me just use featured image and see what this shows. Okay, I don't have anything here, but you can't add a regular image here. So that is something that I'm stuck with. So that is one of the bugs I found. And for that, I'm just going to exit because I don't know how else to work with this. Maybe there is some bug that they need to fix. So let's just exit out of here. And I'm not sure why they even use this logo to say add to library. This logo, if I look at this logo, it looks like a power button on your remote for your television. So I'm not sure why they use that to mean add to library. Maybe it's just me, but let me know your thoughts. Does this icon represent add to library? So but let's go and see exit, discard, just delete it, I don't need it. But that's where you define your header, your body and your footer. So the next thing now, I'll go into the page and show you some other things that I found, which may be nice or bad, depending on what you like to work with. So let me go to pages, leave that. Then get to the home page, and you would see how you can create your page. So the way it is structured in Divi is now, the top bar is where you get your responsive settings and all your other options to save and to preview. Then on the sidebar, we have two options. The first one is to add a layout from the library. So like a template, 
The other option here is to create your layers, which is kind of like your list view in Gutenberg or your navigator in other page builders. So that's where you get your layers. So I've created the hero section and within the section, I've created some rows and columns, which is the maybe good bits for some users that they may understand this whole working structure. But I personally don't find this really helpful because watch what happens. If I choose a regular layout, I can choose the rows and columns. So what I end up with is a section, then row, then columns. Where I'm stuck with is there are no options for using flex and grid. This is 2024. Flex and grid are already standard everywhere, but we are stuck here still using blocks, inline block and inline elements. That is so way backward because now we have so many other options we can use. Flex and grid are so flexible, but unfortunately DV is still stuck in the past era. I don't know why. <laughs> I've been trying to get flex and grid into the thing. The only way you can do it is having to write your own custom CSS. At least thankfully they added the option for custom CSS here so you can write your custom CSS. But if I, let me just go ahead and add in an element. So I'll say maybe some text, just some random text. Then I save it and preview on the front end. Let's go back to the bottom, inspect it. And you see, there's no flex anywhere. There is no grid anywhere as well. Everything is just using display block and display inline block. And they do the spacing using margins and paddings. That is so old school. There are so many better ways now to create responsive designs, which this is not it. The other limitation I found was that, so within my column now, say I want to add two things side by side. Normally in like, Gutenberg, I'll just add a group block. In Elementor, you add a container. In Bricks, you add a div or a block or whatever. But in DV, if I come over to the element, I click on the plus icon and I try to look for anything. So block, no. Div, no. I get a divider. If I say column, nothing. I can't add anything to be able to group two buttons together inside of a column. So please let me know how do you actually put two buttons to be side by side inside a column because I'm not sure how, how to go about that. The other big problems I also found is that we get a section. Great, it is called a section. But now where exactly in the builder can I set it to actually be a section? Because let's see on the front end, they called it a section in the back end, but if I inspect the page, Everything literally is just divs. Divs within divs within divs. And then we get our paragraph at least at the end. When you come over here, it says section. If I go under everything, the only thing I can do is to rename the label that we see in the builder. If I go under design, there is nothing that says any way to change this from a div to a section tag or an article tag or a main tag or a body tag or whatever tag I want to put. No option. So we are stuck with just divs. So it's almost as if DV was not made to be for users to have accessibility in mind. It was just made to be something to play around with because I would not recommend a builder that doesn't give you so many flexible options. Yes. Fine, it can give you the base to be bad. Not That's not a great option, but at least it can still work as long as they not give you like a dev mode or a god mode or whatever mode that people call it and then give you the option to make things as flexible and accessible as possible. Because right now there's no way I'm sure of to change this to a section tag. Like I said, if you know the way, please leave it in the comment section. So yeah, that's another limitation of this builder. So we are in 2024, but we still cannot get flex or grid into the builder without having to write custom CSS. Then 
the other things I found is that when I try to add almost every widget that they have to so accordions, tabs, and other things like that, they were not accessible. So it's like, I'm just going to say this builder was not built with accessibility in mind. It has no plans for accessibility. If even with the latest version, which is DV5, they still did not put any accessibility improvements into the builder. That means they never had any plans for accessibility. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I feel. Because when you come to the front end, that's how bad it is that even the default styling that comes with browsers, which is the focus outline, they literally removed it. So I'm tabbing through links, but I have no clue where I am. All I know is that I'm just moving through some links and it's going. So nothing is focusable, no focus outline. So that means the builder is still removing focus outline even in the default install of DV5. So what hope do we have that the builder is going to have any accessibility improvements? So yeah, that's just my take on it. I like the way that they've structured it that, okay, you get your layers in one side, you get your content area in the center, and then you get your other options here and you can close all of the different panels. So I can close all of the panels and come back into a kind of more like immersive editing mode because I can always click on all of the plus icons to add in a new column or add a new section or things like that. So the builder, I like the builder, but I don't like every other thing that they added into the builder. They don't have any accessibility consideration within the builder. I cannot set something from a div to a section. You cannot use CSS variables within the builder. Not sure why. I cannot do the basic things I do with other builders, like even Gutenberg. I would prefer to use Gutenberg over DV in this case, because at least with Gutenberg, I can add a group block and then set it to maybe an article tag or a section tag or whatever tag I want. With any page builder like Elementor, I can do the same with Breaks, with Breakdance and other builders. But it seems with DV, even in this decade where they rebuilt from scratch, they still did the same limitations. So uh, there's no way I'm going to recommend this builder yet. Maybe with the release of the beta or something else, they will improve it. But with this alpha release, there are a few bugs which I've pointed out as well as accessibility problems. So that's my take on it. Hopefully they will do better. But for now, I'm not so impressed with the builder. So thanks for watching. The next builder I'll be looking at is the great suit in a couple of weeks. So let me know if you've used it, let me know in the comment section what you think about Grade, about their pricing structure and about the features that they have within the builder. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.